This is CBC Here and Now. A community in shock as police continue to investigate a murder in Labrador City. We learn details about the victim and the man charged with killing him. Sometimes it can be a, a, a small number of people that make it bad for everyone else. We need to keep our city clean for our own, uh, for the environment, uh, for our children, uh, for our own use. The spring melt shows all the trash that's hiding underneath. In 30 minutes, Cornerbrook's mayor tells us why cleaning this mess up will take a lot of work. Good evening, I'm Jeremy Eaton and we're going to start tonight in Western Labrador. The Royal Newfoundland Constabulary continues to investigate last week's fatal shooting in Labrador City. It's the town's first homicide in years. Vincent Ward is facing first degree murder charges in relation to the death of a 28 year old man from Montreal. Our Jacob Barker went to Labrador City to learn more about the two men involved. Well, this week in Labrador City, there's a lot of talk swirling around just about what happened inside this house late one night last week and the violent nature of what is alleged to have occurred has a lot of people in the community concerned. The our whole community has been in shock over this incident because um, acts of violence like this certainly aren't commonplace here in our town and uh, it's been pretty much the talk of the town ever since it happened uh, because people are just in disbelief that in our community where you can go next door and borrow a cup of sugar that this would happen at your neighbor's house. People on both sides of this tragedy have been speaking out following Vincent Ward's arrest. Social media posts expressed shock and disbelief that the father of two could be responsible for the violent crime. Some even claimed the shooting must have been self-defense. Like this post, Vince Ward is downright one of the most stellar, impeccable, kind-hearted, helpful, loving individuals anyone could ever ask for. This situation is nearly impossible to grasp right now. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that whatever went on had a reason. The father of Vincent Belanger Dompierre, the victim of the fatal shooting, spoke to French media, saying his son had moved to Labrador a short time ago, that he enjoyed hunting, fishing, and the outdoors. Neither Ward nor Dompierre have a criminal record here in Newfoundland and Labrador, but back in 2009, Dompierre was charged with two counts of assault in Montreal. He pleaded guilty to one charge and served two years probation. The other charge was dropped. What we don't know is the story of what happened last week inside this house. But whatever happened, local organizations want people to know they're here to help. If uh, anybody is struggling with drugs or alcohol related issues, that uh, there is help to be sought in our community. and. Uh, Maybe this may open, your, open people's eyes about uh, what could happen when your feelings or emotions get out of control. Right now, Ward is in St. John's undergoing psychiatric evaluation to find out if he's fit to stand trial. The results of that are scheduled to be heard in the Wabush Courthouse next Monday. Jacob Barker, CBC News, Labrador City. Working alone can be risky business, especially for those in vulnerable situations like the local sex trade. That's what's inspired a local company to step in and offer support. And as Here and Now's Megan McCabe reports, that company says it's got a plan to save lives. I can also press an, in a, an emergency button, so that's like I'm in a lot of trouble and I really need someone to come right away. Aware 360, a safety app designed for anyone who works alone, is now available for free for those working in the sex trade in St. John's and for the staff at Thrive, a local nonprofit that work at the street level to help sex workers. It's just one too many deaths, so, you know, Every time you see that, you just get really scared and worried for anyone else who's working in it. Telelink's Anna Brophy first approached Thrive after hearing about the murder of Vicki Head, a mother who was reportedly killed on the job. We're always keeping track of anyone who's, who's out and, and alone in possibly very dangerous situations. So, um, you know, and this all came on the heels of the, the sex worker that was murdered back in the fall. So this is really good timing for us and where we are a women owned organization. Um, we really saw a good fit because, you know, a lot of the, the, the people that we're working with in this particular project are females. The app is already being used by Indigenous women along the Highway of Tears in B.C., the notorious spot where dozens of missing and murdered women and girls were last seen alive. 
To use the app, a person checks in at the start of a shift and sets an end time to check back in. The phone's GPS keeps them connected to Telelink staff around the clock so they can be reached. If they don't check back in, then they'll get a reminder to do, do so. And then if there's multiple attempts to try to reach somebody, uh, then again, there's an escalation clause where Thrive could be contacted or the police could be contacted. Brophy thinks it could have saved a life. If she was checking in and if she missed her check-in, then we would have caught that alert and then we would have acted on it. With $10,000 from TELUS covering the cost of data to use the app, Thrive's Angela Crockwell says it's amazing to see this open support for an historically stigmatized group. Megan McCabe, CBC News, St. John's. Well, I intended to do it for years, never got around to it. Folks would be coming out of class and saying, you know, wow, I, I hope I'm like that when I'm your age, or I wish I could be like that now, even. Meet 94-year-old Paul Russell. He's proving that age ain't nothing but a number. We'll meet him in about 20 minutes. I think I'm in the wrong place. Yeah, you think? But for all the hunters and anglers out there, the place to be this weekend is the Newfoundland Sportsman's Outdoor Expo. We'll take you there live. Run, run. <laughs> I love that the guy behind never missed a beat. No, like, Gowdy's doing the voice. He's still, you know, getting That's bullseyes great. behind him. Fantastic. Looking That's forward great. to that piece. And the 94-year-old. Uh, really looking forward to that. Yeah, well. we met him uh, yesterday. He's a, he's a great fella. Uh, this is Star Wars Day. Yep. May the 4th. So in case you didn't realize, uh, may the 4th be with you. May, may the 4th, 4th be, be with, with you. you. So I've been working on my joke all day because I'm uh, Han Solo here on the desk tonight because Anthony oh. and Debbie are away. <laughs> It's but, pretty good, pretty good. Even though you've been working on it all day, it's pretty good. I, I screwed it up, though. But anyways, um, Ryan, what's going on with the weather? Uh, well, we've got to get through tomorrow, which is, again, looking a little on the damp side. Uh, but uh, there is one really solid day this weekend, and that is Sunday for the island. Uh, let's uh, show you the weather map in terms of those current temperatures. And as we look off to the south, we can see that warmer air. It's right there, ready for the tapping. Uh, and we will tap into that air mass as we roll into the Sunday time period, as I mentioned. Before that, some weather to deal with in the form of rain. And this system that's rolling out of the Great Lakes right now is already starting to throw a few showers up towards western and central parts of Newfoundland. Uh, in fact, there's a risk even through here across the east through this evening, but it's very light and not so much tomorrow though. Watch your timeline here Saturday morning. If you have uh, some Saturday morning plans early on, it'll be dry for the east and northeast, but that rain will really track through through the morning into the afternoon. It lightens up still some risk of some showers and drizzle, but again, it's Sunday that low departs of solid day shaping up for the island. Still some lingering uh, flurries deal to deal with in Labrador. Your complete weekend forecast in just a few. Jeremy. The RCMP are investigating the cause of a fatal accident that happened earlier today on the TCH near Springdale. It happened at around 8.30 this morning. Only one vehicle was involved. The 28-year-old driver and lone occupant was pronounced dead at the scene. He was from South Brook. A workplace accident more than a year ago has led to charges against the St. John's Dockyard. An investigation was launched in December of 2016 after a worker became overcome by paint fumes while working in a ballast tank on a provincial ferry, the Beaumont Hamill. At the time, firefighters said several workers ran into trouble while painting in a confined space near the bottom of the ship. Six, pe six people were taken to hospital as a precaution. The company has been charged with nine violations under the province's Occupational Health and Safety Act, including failure to ensure that protective clothing and respiratory equipment were used. Now, as you might have heard, a large number of private radio stations in the province has been sold for more than $500 million. But listeners needn't worry about the big buyout. VOCM, K-Rock and Hits FM will all be sold to the Montreal-based Stingray Group. New Cap owns a total of 72 radio stations across the country. It is a publicly traded company, but members of the Steele family control roughly 90% of the shares. New Cap owner Rob Steele says listeners won't hear a difference. Oh, they won't hear any difference at all. VOCM is a heritage station, but uh, they'll want to keep that intact because that's, that's really what the listeners want. It wouldn't be uh, wise of them to change that format. 
there might be comparisons to draw between politics and an oil refinery. Both involve a great deal of pressure and come with the, with the risk of combustion. Today, several members of the Liberal government got a first-hand look at a refinery up close. Here and Now's Ryan Cook reports. Premier Dwight Ball took a break from the fuel and the flames of the House of Assembly this week to come out here today to the Come By Chance refinery. There is a major refit going on here with an additional 250 workers on site to check every inch of the refinery for weaknesses. And that's the kind of thorough inspection that may seem fitting for the Premier this week, given that his party is going through a kind of turnaround on its own. Ball was flanked by Natural Resources Minister Siobhan Cody, as well as MHA's Mark Brown and Colin Holloway. North Atlantic invited us along to see the upgrades and the retrofit, but this is all we actually got to see. No cameras were allowed inside the refinery, and the only person taking photos on a cell phone was Michelle Canizero, the Premier's press aide. At the end of the tour, all four politicians left while we were doing other interviews. This was a chance, however, to chat with the bosses at Come By Chance, nine months after a union leader raised serious concerns about safety within the refinery. Thomas Jenk has only been here since January, but says changes have been made. I would say that the industrial relations, so the unions and, uh, and management, has improved. We, we are talking regularly to each other. We may not agree always, that, uh, I mean always, at, uh, but the, the, my most important point is that we are continuing the communication channels open. Jenk said the company is also committed to improving its carbon footprint. In 2016, the refinery was the second leading source of greenhouse emissions in the province. Jenk says they've made reductions since then, motivated in part by the province's looming carbon tax and the huge impact that could have. That's certainly a, a clear um, position of the company to get more energy efficient uh, because we want to reduce the carbon footprint for, uh, for the company in producing um, the, the fuels. There were reports last year the refinery was up for sale due to poor profits, but Jenk says there's no way, especially not after spending $40 million on this refit. And as for Dwight Ball, he joked he may keep the hard hat and earplugs for the House of Assembly. Ryan Cook, CBC News, come by chance. Budding pot businesses will soon find out if the province has given them the green light to open shop. Those applying for a retail cannabis license will be notified on Monday if their applications have been approved. All successful applicants and their addresses will be posted on the Shop Cannabis NL website, a division of the province's Liquor Corporation. May the 4th be with you. This is Star Wars Day and International Tuba Day. And these young men are having a bit of fun with a sousaphone. And that's what that instrument is called. And I just learned that.
Welcome back to Here and Now. Spring is in the air and it feels like everyone in the province is itching to get outdoors. Whether you're into fishing or camping, riding ATVs or simply hanging around the barbecue sipping on some sodas, you can get geared up this weekend at the Newfoundland Sportsman Outdoor Expo. It's happening at the Double Ice Complex in Paradise and that's where our very own Zach Gowdy is now. Zach, what have you found so far? Well, Jeremy, uh, no joke, I think you could live in the woods with the amount of gear that you can find here this weekend. This is the Newfoundland Sportsman's annual outdoor expo. You know the magazine, well, once a year they bring together a lot of major retailers of outdoor equipment under one roof. Over this way you've got everything from apparel, equipment, RVs, fifth wheelers, boats, this is the fishing section here. We'll take you fishing in just a little while. But right now, I want to tell you about one of the vendors that's really uh, attracting a lot of attention. The pointy end of the stick, as you will. This is the Ar Hoyt Indoor Archery Range, and Philip Crocker from Outdoor Pros is going to tell us about it. Uh, Philip, you've been instructing uh, rookie bowsmen here all day. I'm sure everyone steps up here like they're going to be Robin Hood, but how do most rookies handle the bow? Uh, Generally, people get a little bit frightened about it. They're not, they're not used to the big bang, and they expect it to be a big explosion once the, uh, the arrow goes off. But once they get a couple of arrows in, they get feel more comfortable that way then, right? Okay, well, you and I have done the safety uh, demonstration, so we're going to jump right into the good stuff. Uh, but tell me about the bow we're shooting. A, a lot of uh, the time you see these newfangled compound bows in archery competitions these days, but we're going to do this the old-fashioned way, hey? Right. Yeah, we're going to do beer bow recurve here. So it's just same, just simple old stick and string. That's all it is. All right. Well, you give us a demonstration, please. Let's see how the pros do it. So all you do is make sure you got your arrow knocked. We're grabbing on the string, point at the target, pull back, and release. It's just that easy, right? Right. That's right. Okay. Well, as I step up to take my shot, let me ask you from the hunter's point of view. I mean, you guys sell this gear. Yep. What is the the feeling like when you're hunting with a bow as opposed to using a rifle? Well, the thing about hunting with a bow is what I find is that it's all about getting as close as you can. That's where a lot of people with a rifle try to get as far away. So I want to be in close, up close and personal, intimate experience with the moose. I'm calling him in. He knows I'm there. And that's to me, that's what it's all about is getting as close as I can. You guys, you really feel your own heart pumping. That's there, right. Man. Exactly. All right. Well, speaking of heart pumping, let me, I'll give you, I'll trade you the microphone. Cool. Thank you very much. We're going to use this thing here. Yep. So you're going to put fingers. your middle finger yep. in through that. Oh, yeah. Is that a little hole? Nope, other way. Uh, other way. See, he made it look so easy. There you there go. You know. Okay, we'll knock an arrow. Yeah, and you all want to do is make sure you put it, knock it underneath that little red knock there. Everything I know from archery, make I sure learned from sure Game of Thrones. Archery. All right, you ready? <laughs> Let's try that again. Make sure you keep it on there. Perfect. Ooh. How did, how did I do on a scale of a zero to bad? Well, see, I'm about a six. I think you got about a zero. Okay, well, any nearby caribou, you better stay away. But for the rest of you, please come down and check it out this weekend. Uh, we'll take you back to the fishing pond next time. Uh, but it's a lot of fun here at the Paradise Double Ice Complex. You can step up, and um, as long as you get it in the target, you can always say you did better than Zach Gowdy from here and now. <laughs> Thanks for that, Zach. One Nova Scotia dad is making his case for Father of the Year. He built a life-size replica of one of the most iconic ships from the Star Wars saga. Best of all, it's so realistic the man's 12-year-old son can hop in and take it for a spin. The CBC's Colleen Jones took a trip to their workshop in Queensland, Nova Scotia. A lot of us have watched Star Wars and thought, well, that's cool. Not Alan Carver, especially when it comes to those TIE fighters. If you had a chance to have get a TIE fighter, wouldn't you want one? Well, maybe I don't want one, but I want to fly it. Okay, so it doesn't fly, but you can drive it. After I squeeze in, Alan shows me the sound effects panel. It takes me for a spin. It's uh, just a regular remote control receiver. Of course, the main driver isn't Darth Vader. It's his 12-year-old son, Kyle. And you have to admit, if this guy was your dad building stuff like this for you, it'd be pretty cool. Their backyard is full of old parts and projects. Again, there's another wheelchair motor. But back to the main event, the TIE Fighter. That's foam. Yeah, if you look inside, you can see this is steel, all the edging. This is steel, this is structural. 
He spent about three months working on the project in his work shed. I've had a lot of crazy ideas and stuff, and when I tell people those ideas, I always, always get the, oh, what? Or, sure you are. Yeah, yeah. you're going to build a TIE fighter, are you? Yeah, I'm going to build it. So, I guess part of what motivates me is kind of proving people wrong. It sounds kind of, I don't know, weird, but when people say don't do something, you only want to do it more. So don't tell him he won't be able to do his next project. He's building a Batmobile. Picture that now like that. So when it's done, it's going to be probably eight feet long. Driving the Batmobile and having a TIE fighter, what will the neighbors think? If there's something weird, then generally they go, oh yeah, that's Frigley's Road. The neighbors say they're used to the quirky things coming out of Alan Carver's imagination. Don't kill the news reporter, don't kill the news reporter. But an Imperial Fleet TIE fighter? Well, that really is out of this galaxy. Colleen Jones, CBC News, Queensland. Now still with the iconic Star Wars movies, this province has an interesting connection to the original soundtrack. and he's still working out twice a week. We're gonna introduce you to him, coming up.
update is brought to you by the HCF Home Lottery. Bonus deadline is tonight at midnight. Get your tickets now at hcfhomelottery.ca. Welcome back to Here and Now. Uh, Jeremy Eaton here with uh, Ryan Snodden. Now, we've been talking a lot about Star Wars today because it's May the 4th. May the Force be with you, may the Fourth be with you. And that last story that Colleen Jones did was about the TIE Fighter. And I have uh, some ringtones on my phone that I used to use. See if you can hear this. So I used to use that as like if a text came in, but it got so annoying I just had to shut it off altogether. Everybody in the newsroom basically vetoed and said, stop it. Now that's a pretty cool one. <laughs> sorry, sorry. We should actually have that for when we're talking about snow coming in this time of year. <laughs> the impending doom of uh, snow and then the Darth Vader uh, soundtrack in behind. So uh, talk us through it, Ryan. Yeah, well, we do have snowfall warnings in effect uh, for the southeast parts of Labrador. Uh, as much as 20 centimeters for inland and higher elevation areas, there's also a special weather statement in effect for Cartwright. Rainfall warnings are in effect for western areas of Newfoundland from uh, Bay St. George right up through to the uh, Baver Peninsula, uh, including Corner Brook and Gross Morn and the Humber Valley. So this is the area where we have a best chance of getting into that 15 to 25 millimeter range. And there's also a wreck house wind warning in effect for this evening into the overnight. Here is uh, what we're looking at in terms of rainfall. A pretty good soaking here across the southeast as well, including the Avalon and the Buren. But I think generally here amounts are going to be in that 10 to 15 millimeter range, perhaps as much as 20 millimeters in some pockets. But these areas shaded in yellow that are under that rainfall warning and even up towards the northern peninsula are best chance of getting, as I said, into that 15 to 25 millimeter range. Hence the rainfall warnings from Environment Canada. In terms of Labrador and the snowfall, I think amounts will be closer to five centimeters for Labrador City back towards Happy Valley Goose Bay. The possibility in some of the higher elevations uh, of getting closer to 10 centimeters with those areas in white, but it's the southeast sections here where where Environment Canada has issued that snowfall warning, the best chance of seeing amounts in that 10 to 15, maybe even 20 centimeter range. Welcome to May. Now we do have a few of those showers and flurries rolling in as we speak. The weather maker itself is still well back to the south, but the rainfall is on the leading edge of this. And so we'll time it out for you. A very quiet start to the morning for St. John's, the northeast coast, the northern peninsula and most of Labrador. But knock, knock, knock on the door will be the rain and the snow and it will track in through the morning. Uh, wet start from start to finish from Cornerbrook down towards the Buren Peninsula, uh, Grand Falls, Windsor. That snow just on the doorstep of Labrador City and it all tracks in through the day tomorrow. I think we will see that rain mixed with snow across southern areas of Labrador, hence the lower totals there. It's just going to have a hard time accumulating uh, with temperatures just above the freezing mark. Across the island, the periods of rain will be steadiest through the morning hours on the leading edge of that rainfall. And then into the afternoon, as the heaviest rain works to the north, it's more of a scattered shower drizzle activity that we're talking about into the afternoon. Winds are going to be gusty in from the southwest into the afternoon along the west coast. Some gusts in the 60 to 70 kilometer per hour range. Gusts 60 to 70 from the southeast for the Avalon, the northeast coast, and into Labrador. Again, it's that messy old mix. Now, as we roll through the Sunday time period, some lingering flurries on the menu uh, with showers possibly even into the afternoon for Labrador. A beauty day. Winds are going to be a little on the breezy side. Some gusts in the 50 to 60 kilometer per hour range, but lots of sun into the afternoon. Temperatures ranging from 6 and 8 in onshore winds to as warm as 12 to 14 degrees for St. John's up the northeast coast to central. And we'll talk about what next week holds coming up in just a few minutes. Jeremy. Thanks a lot, Ryan. If you have a hard time getting motivated and getting out of bed and dragging yourself to the gym, well, you might be inspired by Paul Russell. When he was just 93 years old, he signed up at the Max Fitness Center for some personal training sessions. Eight months later, Russell is still hitting the gym twice a week. Today, he turns 94. I caught up with him in between some reps to chat about why he waited so long to start to get buff. And point your chest up toward the wood where that's attached. Yeah, beautiful. There we go, we got 10 like this. Paul, May 4th is your birthday. Yeah. Can you tell us how old you're gonna be? How young you're gonna be? I'll be 94 on May the 4th of this year. Good, 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 good. Three more. Good. Paul, how long have you been working out here at the One Max? More and you get a break. Oh, about eight months, I think. Were you a workout guy no. before eight months ago? No, not really. I was too busy to, to go and work out. 
<laughs> so what were you doing uh, before uh, eight months ago that you were Oh, I retired about 20 years ago or so. And what did you do for work, Paul? Uh, I worked with a fish processing company, Bonavista Cold Storage Company Limited. So how did you go as being a 93-year-old guy who wakes up one day and says, hey, I think I want to work out? Like, how did that come about? Well, I intended to do it for years, never got around to it. And then I, you know how relatives get into your life and disrupt everything. My grandniece signed me up for here at Max's establishment. So same thing now, but you're just going to hold this by your chest. There you go. Good. Take your time. So Paul's a hardworking guy. He's got a great work ethic. Uh, I think he is our oldest member and he is certainly my oldest client. Uh, we've been working together uh, since the fall and we train together twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. When I first uh, took on Paul as a client, I was actually quite intimidated, uh, but I've come to realize that, I mean, what I do is creating an individualized program for anybody based on whatever considerations they have. Just considerations of, uh, you know, the effects of aging uh, and how we go about exercising safely. Um, and more importantly, I think as well is considering what movements would be valuable to him. So I try very hard to simulate things uh, that would happen in a day-to-day -day life, uh, you know, carrying things up and down the stairs, sitting up, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, so basically those movements, even posture, that sort of thing, just trying to really kind of counteract anything that he might be affecting, uh, experiencing rather, uh, as a result of his age and lifestyle. So a flat back, we're gonna keep that weight close to your body so that we can reduce the risk on the lower back. And then there, you're gonna push through your heels, squeeze your butt, stand all the way up. I definitely have my, uh, my eyes opened to uh, certain capabilities and also uh, just the benefits that uh, coming to the gym and, and exercising regularly uh, can really bring on. Approaching this, initially I really thought about the physical benefits, uh, you know, things I just mentioned, like strengthening those everyday movements and that sort of thing. Uh, but I've seen, you know, socializing and getting out and that sort of thing. We've grown a community here. Uh, you know, before we, we were filming, he was interacting with some, with some members. Those are all friends that he's made since he came here. What's your inspiration? Why do you get up every morning wanna, or twice a week to come here to the Max and work out with Dane? Well, I think I get into the da danger zone. That means I can kick the bucket in almost any day now. So, and I got a lot of stuff I got to clear up in my own life, uh, possessions and uh, what to do with them and so on. So, that's, uh, I, I just want to keep on doing that. Once I get that done, I don't care when I, where, when I go. <laughs> Probably to yourself, you're a guy who just comes to the gym twice a week. But for other people, you could be looked at as an inspiration. How does that make you feel, Paul? Well, I think if they feel that uh, if I'm doing it, they could do it, and that would be good for them to do it. Subject, you know, what they do to suit their age or, or abilities. Would you consider him to be an inspiration here at the gym? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And members uh, frequently uh, tell him that. He'll, he'll be sitting out waiting at the coffee station and folks will be coming out of classes saying, you know, wow, I, I hope I'm like that when I'm your age or I wish I could be like that now even. Uh, so it's, it's really amazing. And uh, you know, even on the snowiest days, sometimes when other folks can't get the car out of the driveway, he'll find a way <laughs> to get down here and, and work out. So it's amazing, you know, what lengths he'll go to, uh, to make it to his appointments. Would you recommend this uh, working out twice a week to anybody else in your age bracket? Yes, I would. I think it uh, keeps them in better shape. I don't know if I got the better shape yet or not, but we're working there to get there. Uh, I got to change my, my uh, trainer, maybe. Change your trainer, get a better yeah. trainer, eh? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> How you doing? I'm all right. You told me it was heavy. That. You're holding out on me. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> He's a pretty remarkable guy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, did you notice nice. that I was wearing you on, on the shirt? Nice shirt, I yeah, gotta say. That's a pretty nice shirt. Yeah, definitely. I, uh, I, I wore that shirt because I thought I was going to work out with him, but uh, it looked like too much hard work. Yeah. So I said, uh, yeah, you can do that. There's no keeping up with him. But I, I, you may not have noticed, but there's uh, six or seven people in that room, and one of them was his grandniece, the, the girl who got him involved, Antonia. And she said that there was a big party for them today, so uh, all he wanted was cake. So hopefully uh, he has a cheat day today, and he can uh, have his fill of cake. Happy birthday. The snow is gone and the problem now is everywhere you look there is garbage. There is garbage on the sides of the road and all over the walking trails in Cornerbrook. I'll tell you what the city is going to do to clean it all up. I don't think the fish are biting. 
Ah, uh, you know what? It's okay. A bad day of indoor fly fishing at an arena in paradise is still better than a good day at the office. We'll take you back to the Newfoundland Sportsman's Outdoor Expo right after the break. Welcome back to Here and Now. Automated garbage collection is starting soon for some residents in St. John's. Crews delivered carts to areas involved in phase one of the project this week. By 2019, the entire city will be using the robo garbage collection system. Now the carts are electronically tagged and belong to the property, not the homeowner. All garbage being placed in the cart must still be bagged and that blue bag recyclables that must be placed one meter away from the cart. These days it seems that Cornerbrook is trashed with litter. Coffee cups, takeout containers and pop cans cover the side streets in the West Coast City. The mayor says it's going to take a group effort to clean it up. Here and now's Colleen Connors brings us that story. It's unsightly and unpleasant. Garbage is everywhere. Well-known landscape painter Lloyd Pretty ranted about the litter obstructing his view of Cornerbrook. His post got over 500 comments with people agreeing that the garbage has got to go. Mayor Jim Parsons gets it, but says it looks really bad right now because all the snow just melted and the spring cleanup hasn't started yet. We have a beautiful, beautiful green city. Uh, and uh, it is really marred by that litter. So if we can, uh, again, we need to encourage all members of the community uh, to uh, do their part and uh, try and keep it out of the uh, gutters and off the roads in the first place. People are still throwing their takeout containers out their car windows. Sometimes it can be a, a, a small number of people that make it bad for everyone else. The city tries to reprimand the culprits when possible. Uh, we get different complaints, uh, specific complaints on certain areas or certain, uh, certain, you know, garbage areas, certain commercial areas, certain residential areas. And uh, as we get those, of course, we do respond to them. Sometimes uh, it's, you know, our, our municipal enforcement officers have to uh, issue tickets or warnings. But there is always going to be some people who toss their trash wherever they please. City staff start curbside cleanup soon, and there is also a large push for community groups and volunteers to pick up the litter. 
Parson says that city crews will be out cleaning up in the coming weeks in Corner Brook, but the city is also launching this new initiative to get citizens out to pick up some of that litter. That's coming in the coming weeks as well. Colleen Connors, CBC News, Corner Brook. Take me down to the Paradise City. We're heading back to where the Newfoundland Sportsman Outdoor Expo is on now at the Double Ice Complex. There is gear there for just about every summer holiday and it's on sale. But in tough economic times, do people really spend their money on quads? Here are now Zach Gowdy, who was shooting arrows earlier. He could be fishing. We want to know uh, what, what are you up to now, Zach? What's on the go out there? Yes, Jeremy, I've relocated from the indoor archery range now to the indoor fly fishing pond. They say this is the most fun you can have indoors. But uh, Johnny and Matt from Outdoor Pros are here showing people the ropes. Uh, guys, fly fishing is one of those things people say they'd always like to try. Well, what's it like up here, you know, showing them how to cast for the first time? Oh, it's super easy, you know. I think with just a bit of uh, the right instruction, it makes it a lot easier. And we've got the right gear set up for you. So that's the good starting point after that we can show you. And it meets the blast. It beats real work, right? Oh, goodness, yes. <laughs> well, you guys are certainly making it look easy. So uh, we're going to keep on watching you as I uh, step off to chat with Leslie Ann Corgan, the operations hey. manager with yeah. Newfoundland Sportsman. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Um, so uh, we're watching the boys fly fish. But tell me, who are you guys trying to reel in to this event this weekend? Well, we just want to see anyone who has any interest in anything outdoors. So we've got two full arenas, and it's chocked with anything you could dream of doing outdoors. Wonderful. Um, certainly, you know, you've got your uh, traditional audience for this kind of thing, your hunters and your anglers, but what are you guys doing to sort of broaden the tent and, uh, you know, get more people into the expo? Yes, well, we've actually this year, we've broadened the focus because we're the Newfoundland Sportsman. We do get branded as being the hook and bullet kind Good. of crowd. Yeah. So this year we really tried to broaden the focus and we brought in some more kayaking, some more um, things that aren't definitely, aren't hunting, not into harvesting something. So yeah, so broaden more outdoor activities. So. Yeah, and there certainly is a broad range of uh, activities and hobbies that are represented here. But let me ask you a serious question. You know, there's certainly all the things here, as much as they're part of uh, many people's lives and even their, their identities. You know, hunting and fishing, these are, these are hobbies. And I'm wondering how do you market hobbies in a time when uh, a lot of people are cutting back to essentials only in these tough economic times. Yes, absolutely. It is a challenge, I will say that. And I know that for some of the larger dealers, it's probably a little bit more challenged with those high ticket items. But the lucky thing for us in this industry, in Newfoundland in particular, is as you've mentioned, it is a part of our identity and it is who we are. So a lot of people who are into hunting and fishing, they will just spend the money when they need new gear because it's actually new tools to do, to live the way that they do. So yeah, I mean, while other industries suffer, this one kind of, it keeps steady. Yeah, you know, ups I, and downs, but. Yeah, I, I hope anyone who's into this can always, you know, feel like they can afford a fishing rod, right? Absolutely, yes, Wonderful. absolutely. Well, thank you so much, and best of luck here this oh, weekend. Oh, thanks, we're having a great time so far. Wonderful, so. absolutely, me too. Well, hey, I've already tried two new sports, and I've only been here an hour and a half. And that's what we want to hear, <laughs> try new things. Whatever you've been thinking about trying, it's here. Fantastic, thanks so much, Leslie. Thank you. And again, this is at the Paradise Double Ice Complex all weekend long, come on out, have as much fun as we've been doing here tonight live on the show. Reporting live, I'm Zach Gowdy for Here and Now. Talk about Mighty Ducks. This video is too cute not to share. It was sent to us on Facebook earlier today. These little ducklings getting led away by their uh, modern day coach Bombay and hopefully getting ready to practice the flying V. Now Ryan has your weekend forecast when we come back. That is, that's uh, quite the leap of faith they're making there. But look at them. At least the grass is green. That breaks good. the fall a little bit. That's true. But that's a big that's a big drop for those little ducklings. And that that was taken I guess around Memorial University, so they're probably going back to the pond for a dip. Here we go. One. You can do it. You can do it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Took a little bit of a tumble, but uh, no worse for wear as the uh, ducks scatter on together. Quack, 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 Mr. Ducksworth.
We all know what that jam means. It's time to introduce our young athlete of the day, Brooklyn Keith. Brooklyn figure skates from May to October in Fort McMurray with the Noralta Skating Club. From November to March, she skates in Grand Falls, Windsor. She travels three hours, uh, three days a week to skate uh, with the sparkling blades, but loves every minute on the ice. Congrats, Brooklyn, you're today's Young Athlete of the Day. This weather update is brought to you by the HCF Home Lottery. Bonus deadline is tonight at midnight. Get your tickets now at hcfhomelottery.ca. Welcome back to Heron Now. So the countdown is on. Uh, Final countdown. Two weeks. Two weeks till the May long weekend. And that means everyone's going to be keeping their eye on, will it be warm enough to pitch a tent? Or am I going to have to go out in the camper? Well, you could buy all of them down at the expo. Or Whoa. whether we'll need the snowblower to get to the camper in Western Labrador. Snap. So this is Brent Rich uh, shared this picture with me. This is uh, from the campground in Lab West. And what's that, Roddy? Dooley Lake, okay. Uh, of course, Rod Dobbin, our switcher director uh, from Western Labrador, so he the knows pride those and joy of Wabush. absolutely, and he knows those stopping grounds well. So there's Dooley Lake, and yeah, just a little bit of snow on the ground. Tiny, still. tiny bit. Uh, and Mother Nature obviously <laughs> did not get the memo uh, that uh, yeah, just two weeks away, and more snow on the way for this weekend. Uh, there is some warmer air building off to the south, though, and that's some good news as we have temperatures up into the 20 degree range, uh, even under, into southern Ontario today, Calgary as well. So as long as it's building somewhere, uh, hopefully it will be uh, moving in more uh, uh, for next week, not so much this coming week uh, for Western Labrador and not really looking at uh, some very warm temps, but uh, hope in the long, long range. And there's the low that is going to be bringing at least some warmer temperatures to Newfoundland uh, through this weekend. It will track, as I said, snow into Lab West, some more snow on top of the snowpack there at the campsite in uh, Dooley Lake and into Southern Labrador. It'll be rain mixed with snow through the day, but note Saturday evening into the overnight. I think snow generally takes over here Sunday morning. Uh, look Looking at uh, a clear start uh, to the day and a clear finish as well. Looking at just a mix of sun and cloud for most of Newfoundland on Sunday. Again, a little on the uh, unsettled side, continuing in Labrador with some shower and flurry chances. Temperatures will still be in the low single digits and in fact near the freezing mark in Lab City. And you can see where we're into the high single, low double digits and even teens across most of Newfoundland. Now that system departs and into Monday, our next system will arrive. Still some uncertainty with this one, but it does look like we'll see rain for most of the island and then Monday afternoon into Monday evening, colder air wrapping in on the other side of the system may bring some accumulating snow to places like the northern peninsula, onshore flurries perhaps to the west coast, maybe even a little bit of uh, a little dusting perhaps for central the northeast coast as the system departs uh, Monday night into Tuesday. We will see a bit of a clear out after that. This next system will be rolling well to the north. That'll have uh, a favorable setup in, in that the warm air should be able to push back in with a bit of southerly flow as setting up for mid to late next week. And with that southerly flow, of course, we're talking about high single, low double digits, and perhaps by Thursday, Friday, back into the teens. So we'll keep our fingers crossed on that. Into Labrador, again, not really tapping into that warm air, unfortunately, uh, for you folks across uh, the west especially. And uh, for you can see Happy Valley Goose Bay as warm as 8 on Thursday. After the break, we'll have our viewer picture of the day.
good idea. It's an, sorry, welcome back to Here and Now. Uh, it's what you might call an uplifting rescue story. Now this puppy was rescued from a drain in New Delhi with the help of a local engineer. Now that engineer heard the dog's cries and realized he couldn't get the animal free without getting himself stuck. So naturally, the engineer went back to his lab and within six hours had joined together a drone and a robotic arm controlled by artificial intelligence. Now the device was able to lift the dog out of the drain, but it was also able to monitor the dog's heart rate so the animal wouldn't suffocate while being carried safely to the ground. Now the engineer has adopted the dog and his name, you guessed it, Lifted. What a story. <laughs> All that in six hours. Jeepers, creepers. Wow. Didn't get that Very one. impressive. Very impressive. Yeah. Great, great story. Engineers. Wrong camera again. Yeah. Camera three. And we have uh, some birthdays and anniversaries to get to. Celebrating 50 years of marital bliss on May 3rd, 2018, Alma and Alan Cranford of Northern Arm. Happy 54th anniversary to James and Lily Budgel. Happy anniversary to Pierce and Sheila Reed celebrating their 52nd. Celebrating their 50th anniversary on May 3rd, Warren and Loretta Brown, formerly from Catalina, now living in Clarenville. Happy 50th wedding anniversary to Scott and Verna Mitchell of Middle Arm. Tom and Phyllis Cutler of Wareham, Bonavista Bay that is, celebrating 68 years on May the 2nd. Congratulations. Also congratulations to Roy and Florence Windsor who celebrated their 60th wedding anniversary on April the 25th. Congratulations to Bernice and Ross Anstey of Twillingate celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary on May the 4th today. Happy 50th anniversary to Harold and Daphne Pitcher of Mount Pearl. And happy 50th anniversary greetings to Huey and Loretta Osmond from Port of Basque today. Happy anniversary from family and friends to Ruth and Warwick Sawyers who celebrated their 65th anniversary on April 30th. Happy 59th anniversary to Utley and Maggie Brake residing in Cornerbrook. Happy anniversary from family and friends going out to Wayne and Ruby Watkins on celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary. Happy 92nd birthday on May the 8th to Harry Wareham of Gander. Happy 92nd birthday to John Hillard of Cape and Geel. Happy 90th birthday, Olive Barrett of Bay Roberts, whose birthday was on May the 2nd. Happy birthday to Donald Jewer of Botwood, uh, now living in Gander, turns 94 years young today. 90th birthday greetings to Flora Canning from Comfort Cove New Newstead, uh, whose special day was on April 30th. Happy birthday to Neil Austin of Springdale, celebrating his 92nd birthday today. And happy golden 50th wedding anniversary wishes to Elaine and Mike Beverly of Cornerbrook on May the 3rd. Also, Mike will celebrate his 70th birthday today. So happy anniversary and birthday. On May the 7th, Julia Noonan, formerly of Beta Bird, turns 100 years old. The family asks you to please join them this Sunday, May the 6th, at the Carboneer long-term care facility to celebrate this wonderful occasion from 2.30 to 4 p.m. Party on, Julia. Happy 60th wedding anniversary to Bill and Irma Perry celebrating on Tuesday, May the 15th. The Perrys are formerly of Millertown, but now reside in Ottawa, Ontario. Happy 67th wedding anniversary, Eva and Graham Adams, who were married 67 years ago in Harbor Grace on May the 7th. They are now retired and living in Seal Cove. Wishing Bride and Randy Bryant of Cornerbrook a very happy 56th wedding anniversary on May the 7th. And Bruce and Fran Patey are celebrating 50 years of marriage today. Also celebrating a golden anniversary today, Bill and Ruth Seymour of Butterville. Happy 50th to you both. So congratulations and happy birthday to all uh, the people celebrating last week, this week, and next. That's right. And, of course, our birthday boy from earlier in the show, also 94 today. Boom. Paul Russell, happy birthday to him, and uh, keep working out, buddy. You'll get there. Hopefully he got that ice cream cake. He He's certainly for. better. Yeah. Uh, our viewer picture of the day is a fantastic picture. This is the sunset at Signal Hill, and... Uh, that's Great glorious. photographer from uh, the city of St. John's, a frequent contributor to photos you see online. This is from Alex Swee, and uh, just a great guy and a great photographer. And thanks so much for sharing this with me, Alec. And uh, 
Yeah, a little bit of sunshine. It'll look kind of like that on Sunday on Signal Hill. So looking well, good. Well, we're gonna we're gonna hold you to that, Ryan. So I if it's so. not sunny, then they're gonna be like dee 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 dee, <laughs> right in the kisser. Anyways, uh, thanks for joining us on Here and Now today. I was doing so well. Great till the end. Thanks for joining us on Here and Now, and have a great weekend. Uh, we'll see you again on Monday. May the fourth be with you, and also with you.